Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Bolivios. I'm recording this video as a response to a question that I had regarding noise floor. And the question was, what is it that I do to record audio into a video? And what can be done to eradicate background noises, things like fans and computer noises and all, all sorts of things like that? Well, the answer is very simple, which is why I want to put the video out. And that is, I do absolutely nothing to my audio and so the audio that you're hearing is literally the direct raw audio that is coming from my voice into the Rode Procaster going into my Scarlett Focusrite 2i4 and that's going straight into my computer and I'm recording this video on an iSight camera which is the inbuilt camera on the laptop and it's a seven year old, six year old MacBook Pro which probably explains why the, uh, the video quality is so poor. But that's it. The reason why it sounds acceptable is without any processing is, is also very simple. And it may not be very obvious from the angles or that the camera's pointing towards me at, but essentially this pop filter is approximately one inch away from the top of the microphone. My mouth, the corner of my mouth, which this is pointed to, is about another one to one and a half inches away from the mic, from the pop filter. So in total, I'm roughly between two and three inches away from the microphone. What that means is I can run this at very low levels of gain. So I'm not picking up any other noises around me or very little amount of extra noise around me. Also, if you notice, I'm in a pretty rubbish room for audio recording. Um, I've got blank walls. Uh, I actually have hard flooring here, which is usually a big no-no in uh, in audio recording. Uh, but as needs must, I'm currently uh, in the middle of moving and all sorts, so uh, this is where I am for the moment. And yet, it still sounds acceptable. And the reason for this is having the microphone close to your mouth, having the gain set at a low level, so you're just picking up what is in front of the microphone. The microphone choice does have some influence in this. This is a dynamic microphone as opposed to a condenser microphone. Um, there's lots of videos on the differences between the two. But essentially, a dynamic microphone typically is less sensitive than a um, condenser microphone and this is a cardioid polar pattern microphone which is the majority of microphones that you'll find on Amazon and um, and places like that that are cardioid polar pattern. What that means is it's very good at picking up what's directly in front and in it goes in a heart shape hence the cardioid name and so if I turn the microphone to the side you'll notice that my voice has gone off and as I bring it around closer to the front, it sounds as it should. Picking up noises from the back, it doesn't tend to. Cardioid polar patterns tend to just pick up what's in front and slightly, slightly to the side. Um, so it's very good for that. And so I can exclude a lot of the noises from, in, from my outside, um, say cars and um, if there's a washing machine on in the background, things like that, it does tend to exclude them just naturally from the type of microphone that I'm using. But the key thing is having a very, very low gain. And even in a video like this, I appreciate that the majority of my lower part of my face is covered with a microphone. But it's to me, I'd rather have that sacrifice and have a better sounding um, audio quality. So to give you an example, you often see this, which is the microphone put quite far away, maybe even out of screenshot, but you can't hear very well. So what people have to do then is, which I'm doing now, is putting up the gain. So I've got the gain set pretty high now, um, really high, but, and you can hear me well, but you can also hear anything else that happens. So if I've got a computer fan on in the background, you will pick that up if I've got um, a car passing by, which thankfully there isn't at the moment, but if there was one, 
you would be able to hear that. Um, so it's the trade-off. What do you want? The a good, better sounding audio, or do you need your face more in the view? Personally, there's a, there is actually a car going by. Um, but personally, uh, this to me is too much of a compromise for the audio quality, and I would much rather have better audio. I'll turn the gain down so I don't blow your eardrums off. Okay, so just turning levels back down and now I'm back to the original position. So now I've got the gain set right down and hopefully it's apparent in the apparent in the in the noise floor. The noise floor is now low. Next what I want to do is is just talk about how you would go about potentially processing uh, some audio for uh, a podcast or if you're recording the audio separately to your video you can then process it and then using the video editing software that you have you can um, match it up and use the processed audio over the raw one so i'm going to do that now okay so i've opened up my daw my door which is the digital audio workstation and I'm currently using GarageBand. This is the native software that's found on every Macintosh and but if you are using Windows you can use something like Audacity or um, Adobe or uh, you can even use Logic which is the next level up from this on, on Macs. But uh, I use this. I'm not going to go through how to record into um, into GarageBand or into a DAW because I think there's so many videos on that that, that explain it so well. Um, they're very easy to find. I will, however, do a tutorial if you want me to. Um, so what I've got here is I'm going to record a raw recording uh, which should sound exactly as I'm speaking now as this is an unprocessed audio that you're hearing and then I'm going to process it and I'm going to show you what the end result can sound like and I'm going to also show how you can use the processing to try and get rid of some of those extra noises or trying and just to improve the audio quality. So I'm going to record the intro, a new intro that I'm working on for my podcast called A Doctor's View. So here we go. Hello and welcome to A Doctor's View, a podcast discussing everyday topics in health, fitness and mental well-being, as well as providing an insight into medical life and its challenges. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Let's begin. Okay, so that's a rough um, take on on the intro and so what I want to do is show the uh, process regarding um, the workflow. Let's create a new track just to make this easier so I can just show you what it is that I want to, to achieve. So when you have a track and a recording you've got plugins. Now plugins are essentially when you see a recording studio uh, be it a radio station or a professional music artist you see lots and lots of equipment with lots of dials and lots of um, needles going up and down and monitoring and all sorts of things and um, obviously a laptop doesn't have this so what they there are these things called plugins, which are essentially electronic versions of those analog pieces of equipment. So they're trying to achieve the same thing that those are doing. So there's some things that are your friends. The channel EQ and compressor, they are pretty much the two that you would really need. In fact, on a lot of them, I just use the channel EQ. I've recorded many podcasts without doing anything else other than changing the EQ. There's a few other ones that you may want to include. They are things like the compressor that we've talked about. There's something called an exciter. Uh, what this does is it picks up a certain frequency that you think needs to be boosted and you can add that and you can add the amount that you can choose the frequency and you can also um, add the amount that you want it to improve. You won't hear anything, any changes on my voice currently with me playing around with this, but I'll show you the end results later on. Then you can add uh, your compressor you can turn that on so 
The compressor is your best friend if you know how to use it. It can be your worst enemy if you overuse it. And again, there's loads of tutorials on how to use a compressor. Um, I'm still getting to grips with all of this. I'm actually quite new to the processing side of things in audio. So apologies if it doesn't sound as good as you are expecting in the end result. But essentially the compressor, thre compressor threshold, that's the point at which you want the compressor to kick in um, and the ratio is how much uh, you want the compressor to be working essentially so what it does is it's if you're speaking very very loudly it brings the really loud parts down to make it roughly the same level or lower as a level to um, to what your normal tone is and the gain brings the lowest levels are up, uh, up so that everything looks like a nice middle waveform. Um, it's not the best explanation but there are loads of good good tutorials out there. So you would turn the compressor on. Um, there's a few other things. There's what's called a de Now I've got these in my recent ones because I've used these but um, if they're not there you can um, search for them at least in GarageBand. There's lots of things here. Um, a lot of the ones that I use are found in Dynamics which are all all there and there's a couple that are found in the uh, audio units apple is the standard one forget the focus right one um, but there's a there's a few extra things which are slightly more detailed and this is a whole array of different things and they're very useful tools a lot are for instruments as opposed to voice but you can you can have some fun with them and uh, play around and see what um, what works best for you now the de -esser, um, what this does is the S sounds, the high syllabant sounds, so the s, s, sorry, that's not very pleasant, but that noise, it suppresses them, um, so you don't get all of that. Uh, if, if you do produce audio that has loads of really high syllabant sounds, you'll notice that you can suppress them with the de -esser. And the way to do that, I the way I do it, and apologies if this is the wrong way, but I make that noise uh, continuously, like a s continuously which is my s sound and i turn the de -esser on and as i'm doing it i play around with the frequency and find which frequency um, it picks up uh, and it starts suppressing that s noise uh, and then you can choose the level at which you suppress all these things you have to just play around with now that you can add more so if you see what i did there if you go down to the bottom or even in between the two uh, blocks you can you see a line light up and you can add an extra one. Now there's one called AU Graphics EQ on GarageBand and this is found actually in the audio units Apple and um, it's up here. Um, I can't now actually see it but anyway AU Graphics EQ. If you do this, this what this is is um, a really really more detailed graphics equalizer and what you can do is if you've got say a fan noise going in the background you can play around with each individual um, each individual frequency and start lowering or um, lowering or increasing uh, each one and there'll be a point where you can sometimes pick up which one the fan is um, it, the fan is is recording at so you can actually sometimes lower uh, that particular line or those particular frequencies and you can tr exclude quite a lot of background noise just by lowering that frequency. So if you've got a, quite a high-pitched fan in the background and you find that it's picking up at say the um, 12 kilohertz frequency you can lower that and you'll notice that the sound goes down. The one thing you've got to be careful was, of is is it also lowering um, that frequency on your voice which is causing it to sound pretty bad or muffled so there's a bit of tweaking involved but you can you can use this graphics equalizer to try and improve um, extra noises that are coming into the computer or coming into the microphone rather now the channel eq i forgot to, i've brushed past that unfortunately one second so if you click on the middle bit or the settings um, of, of each one, of each plugin, you get to the, the settings page of it. So this is the standard EQ. You can see it's a flat curve. And this is what I record everything at. And this is what you're hearing now. I know that for my podcasting, I've, I listen to my podcasts uh, before I publish them. I listen to them not through 
um, the best headphones in the world. I monitor using them and I do listen back to them with, say, the, the Audio Technica headphones that I have now. But I also proof listen to them using, typically, um, some AirPods. And that might sound stupid and it might sound ridiculous, but the majority of podcasts are listened to by people in the car or on the train or commuting. And if you look around, there's a load of people wearing AirPods or in-ear headphones. So I try and make my podcast sound good in the standard headphones that people tend to have. And I found it works quite well. And I know that in he- in that my voice is relatively bass heavy, um, which, are, which is at this end of the scale, the left side. And I lack a little bit in the high end, which is uh, on the right side, so the higher frequencies. So when I listen to them in, in um, with some normal headphones, some AirPods, for example, my voice actually really does suffer in the high ends because typical consumer headphones are designed uh, to be heard or designed to amplify a lot of the bass for music and they sound nice and full and they give you a really nice nice. Uh, quality, but they're they're not so much designed for just normal vocal content. And so whilst my current headphones I'm using at the moment to monitor this audio, they sound, the audio sounds fine. When I listen to it on a computer speakers or on headphones, they don't sound very good at all. So what I do is I know I lack in the bass, so I do bring up the um, little bit of the mid to high, and I do bring up the high end a bit as well sometimes I will bring up depending on um, where I'm recording or the type of microphone I'm using I bring up a little little bit of the bass and um, that's pretty much it that's a typical that's a typical change that I will make I do sometimes if there's lots of low-end rumble I bring this in so that I um, don't pick up the really really low end and if you are really close to the microphone and you getting a lot of proximity effect you can bring that in as well and that helps reduce that and again if you've got really high pitch noises that you want to bring out you can you can just completely eradicate them by just bringing in the uh, higher end frequencies as well so if you look at the curve when I take the mouse off it you get just the things in the middle um, that are picking up this will vary between your voice Um, It will vary between the type of microphone you're using. So if you have a typically very bright microphone, you may have to bring the um, higher uh, frequencies down a bit. Or if you struggle with the bass or you have really, really heavy bass in your voice, you can bring this down a bit and so on. It's about playing around and seeing what, uh, what sounds good for you. So what I'm going to do is I've got all of this preset. Oh yes, I've got noise gate as well. Now noise gate um, is a lovely feature. Again, you can overuse it. And what noise gate does is if you've got, uh, this is actually very useful if you've got um, something very low underlying that you want to get rid of. So when you are not talking, you'll only be you you won't be picking up any noise below what I set it to, which is minus 59 decibels. If you turn this all the way up, what you end up doing is cut out a lot of your voice as well. And so you don't want that. So you need to play around with the point that you start not hearing voice, uh, not hearing anything in your playback to when you can start hearing your own voice. And unfortunately, the GarageBand noise gate isn't particularly great in that you can't adjust anything else you can't adjust how fast it works or the attack release time and all those things which more professional um, digital audio workstations have um, but so I don't actually tend to use it at all because I find I'm, I'm too worried it's going to make my audio sound too choppy but what I'm going to do I'm going to delete this track here and I'm going to uh, copy this and I'm going to paste it there so I've, I've set all of these up. Um, they sound quite exaggerated, but it's just to show you the difference between a raw audio content, which is my track one, and a process one, which is track two. So I'm going to play this all from the beginning. You're going to hear the raw one again, and you're going to hear it then go straight onto the processed one, and so you can see the difference. 
Hello and welcome to A Doctor's View, a podcast discussing everyday topics in health, fitness and mental well-being, as well as providing an insight into medical life and its challenges. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to A Doctor's View, a podcast discussing everyday topics in health, fitness and mental well-being, as well as providing an insight into medical life and its challenges. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Let's begin. So it just gives you an idea of all the things you do. It's not perfect by any means what I've done. It's just purely uh, just just to show you a typical workflow. Like I say, normally for podcasting, all I actually end up doing is just changing the EQ and sometimes putting a bit of a compressor if I've got uh, over exuberant guest or something along those lines. But in reality, that's pretty much it. The other thing you can do um, with the... Um, with the EQ is you can bring up the gain if, if you're not using the compressor and that's done on here on the right so I can increase the amount of volume um, and that's similar to what you'll find in a lot of the video um, audio uh, video editing things in the in say iMovie or similar. So that's it. I hope it's been useful in terms of showing you roughly what you can do to help improve audio. Uh, Like I say, I'm quite new to this still and I haven't really explored the whole processing side of things too much. The one thing I will say and the thing that's served me the best in terms of audio quality for podcasting and even these videos is that by making sure that my initial recording is good, my levels are good in terms of gain. I've got good distance between myself and the microphone in that I don't have much distance at all. And I've got a good environment, forget what I'm recording in now. Um, you'll find that it saves you a ton of time later on in terms of you need very little in terms of processing and in terms of adjusting EQs and trying to get rid of all those noises. Uh, it just saves a lot of time and hassle and it gives you a better result, at least in my humble opinion. Before I go, I can't leave this video um, as a doctor in the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK, uh, without extending my sincerest gratitude and thanks to everyone involved in this current pandemic, which is causing so much pain everywhere. And that gratitude doesn't just go out to my colleagues and everyone in the hospital, of which there are thousands worldwide um, everyone from the security guards there to the cleaners to the physios to the intensivists to the all the doctors on the ward and the nursing staff they're, they're all phenomenal um, but outside the hospital there's a lot of people that are continuing to go to work to help keep this country running and they are the postal service the shopkeepers the pharmacists the um, the refuge collectors, all, all these people and all the key workers, the teachers and so many people that have just gone out of my head. Uh, and the list is huge and I, I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned your profession. Um, but my sincerest thanks to everyone and uh, also to everyone who's messaged me and, um, you know, expressing concern and, and gratitude and um it's very difficult for everyone and i'm not someone who likes rules and regulations and things very much um but uh, this is one of those times where i beg of everyone to please follow the guidelines given by the lo- their local health authorities and uh, what seems to be unanimously every government in every country which is to stay indoors and to avoid contact and with people and to not travel unnecessarily um i see on a very daily basis what 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 this is doing to people the um the coronavirus and what it's the impact it's having directly on not just the people it affects um physiologically but also the people it affects within that family and um it's not something to be taken lightly so please uh do do listen to the advice and uh please stay safe as well and yeah i look forward to making more videos in the future uh hopefully um after i've had a haircut i uh, haven't uh, had a chance to and uh also 
um, hopefully it'll be a little bit of a nicer environment too. So anyway, um, stay safe and I wish you all the best and good luck with your any future audio recording endeavors.